There are many ancient sites which upon exploration create an air of doubt surrounding the academic explanation as to their origins, raising logical questions within the minds of the astute. With Iran being a place littered with such structures, one of the most famous of which known as Persepolis. Found upon the banks of the river Polvar, this plateau of mythical carvings simply baffle the modern man. According to permitted academic study, Persepolis dates back a mere 2,500 years. I say mere due to several reasons. First, the lack of ability of those who were living at this particular time, the advanced techniques used within the creation of the site, and the laser-like stone-cut precision, demonstrating techniques utilized by a civilization far more technologically capable than those currently claimed as having been responsible. Thus, I must conclude they predate the academically claimed culprits and are, in fact, the work of a lost civilization. The site possesses claimed Achaemenid styles of architecture, although we feel these claims are a misconception and are, in reality, the work of someone else. Declared a World Heritage Site in 1979, the ancient Persians claimed it as their own city, naming it Persa, which means Old Persian. However, it seems, like so many other inexplicable sites found around the world, it was simply re-inhabited. Yet unlike these many other sites, inscriptions found upon buried treasure at the site actually possesses an inscription, left by one of the oldest rulers of the Persians, openly admitting this re-inhabitation as a reality. Treasure found still successfully concealed at the site, a sign of the people's loyalty to their king, not discovered until modern times, presumably protected by them and its secret location, until their death at the hand of Alexander the Great's invaders. Solid gold and silver tablets preserving the king's account of the site's origin. Quote, Darius, the great king, king of kings, king of countries, son of Hytaspis, this is the kingdom which I hold, from the Sache, which is beyond Logdia, to Cush, from Sindh to the Indus Valley of Lydia, and the oldest of Persia, Sparta, this bestowed upon me by Ahura Mazda, the greatest of gods. May Ahura Mazda protect me and my royal house. An inscription I perceive as an explanation that the ruler himself, due to the site's incredible nature, believed it had been built by the gods and, by divine right, had been bestowed upon him. Archaeological evidence accumulated by the French archaeologist André Godard, who excavated Persepolis in the early 1930s, believed it was Cyrus the Great who chose the site Persepolis was built upon and that Darius I built the terrace and the palaces. These conclusions, I assert, were due to Darius and Cyrus reutilizing such structures as their places of burial. This, due to their divine perceptions, explained upon these once hidden treasures. However, these rulers, dated well within permitted archaeological timelines for man, are accompanied by the countless archaeological artifacts predictably left over by these cultures who never experienced cataclysm, thus remain perfectly preserved, excavated, and flaunted to the many inquisitive people who visit these museums each year. However, the contradictory inscriptions still reveal very little regarding origins of the ruins in which they were found within. Ruins which are simply unexplainable. When one visits the site, they are initially confronted with gigantic megalithic stones, not only within its foundations, creating the platform used as a stronghold for many years, but also, somehow set aloft, forming still existing trilithons, which regardless of the demolition efforts undertaken by Alexander, still litter the site. A 125,000 square meter terrace artificially constructed partly cut straight out of Ramat Mountain. An additional factor which supports my argument of a highly advanced builder are the Lamasu. These mythical animals reminiscent of centaurs are many tons in weight, 
and in a previous video, we showed the tremendous challenge a mere 150 years ago transporting such megaliths was. Not to mention the tremendous artistic achievements these stone carvings would have been, along with countless other intricate, masterfully carved artworks throughout the site, which mystify all who gaze upon them. Furthermore, and perhaps most interesting, are the far more primitive-looking versions. Some argue were incomplete, others argue were attempts by future primitive cultures. These attempts, although in some areas share tool markings reminiscent of patterns like those of the stone-cutting technologies we have recently been studying in depth, may just be mere coincidences due to the random hacking that seems to have been undertaken upon the stones. Due to the positioning of the Persepolis Plateau, it was logically not constructed as a military stronghold, but rather a temple devoted to something else. A build surrounding this ancient civilization's belief systems, or possible observations, of many alignments in relation to precessions only just coming to light. Due to its location, far away from any strategical placement, found within a remote and mountainous region, although it was an inconvenient residence for the ruler of the empire, it was still chosen as a discreetly positioned capital of the Persian Empire. Yet clearly not a position chosen by the Persians, but merely reclaimed as their own work. Far away from the melting pot of developing Persian culture, the country's true capitals were Susa, Babylon, and Ecbatana. With the Greeks completely unaware of its existence throughout their own reign, only plundered by Alexander the Great's eventual far-reaching invasion. It is a site full of compelling features, most of which in direct contradiction to that which is claimed by modern academia, and indeed their institutional cohorts, Iran's museums. It is a site we find highly compelling. In our last video, we covered the enormous artificially created platform known as Persepolis. Claimed as the work of the Persians, I believe, however, due to the astonishingly advanced nature of the stonework present at the site, and also the inscription of it having been an offering by the gods given to the previous Persian king, that regardless of academic assertions, it is a surviving relic of a civilization far older than they would ever admit to. Found upon several gold and silver tablets found buried within the site, inscribed with a message left by these more modern inhabitants, thanking the gods for the creation of said site, concluded by many ancient civilizations all over the world, who, due to the rigidity of the protected paradigms regarding the chronological timeline of man, are claimed as the builders of said sites, regardless of whether these same institutions' archaeological endeavors prove them incapable, sites that these so-called builders must have been perceived as only ever being able to have been built by the gods themselves. For even to this day, they remain astonishingly ancient achievements, undoubtedly the work of a highly advanced, technologically innovative lost civilization. Naqsh-e-Rostam, for example, an ancient necropolis located about 12 kilometers northwest of Persepolis, is in a set of rock-cut structures, hewn from the mountainside with such precision they are simply unexplainable as the work of any ancient civilization academia has permitted the study of. Clearly made by the same civilization that once created Persepolis, as within this area there are countless enigmatic and astonishingly precise stone structures, some created using enormous megalithic blocks, while others carved directly out of solid stone. My own recent research which has differentiated two ancient civilizations, the Cyclopean and the Polygonal civilizations, is solely based on the separation of their technological prowess, differentiations and similarities with the Cyclopeans, although not displaying the same capability of building walls as that of the Polygonals, were still linked to astonishing builds, such as Petra. These astounding structures also carved straight from bedrock, extremely similar to many of the rock-cut structures found throughout Iran. 
However, Persepolis possesses some techniques that although no one has seemingly looked at closely, is a strange, unique method of linking the stones of some of these structures together. Not only an enigmatic structure, predictably claimed as the Tomb of Cyrus, but they are also present within the impressive yet seemingly demolished fortress, possibly destroyed during an invasion which can be found nearby. Known as the Fortress of Pasargadae, this building is not only constructed using Cyclopean signature blocks, but it seems the same clamping techniques was used within its construction. Intriguingly, however, although these mysterious clamping features are still within the tomb of Cyrus, they are all seemingly missing from the fortress in Pisargadae. The questions these anomalies raise are many in number, yet unlike academia, we do not claim to know the answers. We are merely in pursuit of them, slowly compiled from our gathering of the inexplicable sites worldwide. Eventually, we hope to decipher not only why they were placed there, who built such structures, but indeed, how. Nakesh e Rastam is not the only rock cut structure of astonishing precision found within Iran. Many other precision cut artifacts can be found littering the area. Mada in Salah, for example, being a series of structures also claimed as tombs, created from single enormous rocks. To claim such work as that of primitive tool wielding ancestors, I find absurd. Yet the more I look into these sites, the more confusing and thus enigmatic they become. Not only does academia claim that the plateau of Persepolis was completed, which is clearly not only an obvious misconception, but also the unfinished sections seem to have been attempted to have been finished with primitive tools. But certain places within the area possess the stonework of the Cyclopean civilization, yet with unique clamping techniques found only in Iran. With additional structures, which are located near the rock-cut structures of Nakeshi Rastam, seemingly having been cut and built with blocks of a deliberately opposite type of cutting style. Several alternative scholars who have explored the site have hypothesized that many areas were attempted to have been renovated and reconstructed by a later civilization. And although we know that many of the surviving columns, toppled during Alexander the Great's invasion, were indeed re-erected, the enigmatic chisel marks found throughout the site, and also the Cyclopean style blocks found within the fortress on the hill, to us, seems to indicate that whoever attempted these finishing works were far less capable than those who originally created the ancient ruins found throughout Iran. Furthermore, evidential features found within the area of Persepolis. One such feature, known as the Great Staircase, is seemingly the most highly advanced precision work of the Cyclopeans. This pinnacle in architectural design indicating the nearing of the end of their legacy upon our planet. Did they merely rediscover these incredible rock-cut structures? Were they the builders of such? For regardless of the fact that I have indeed linked their work to the astonishing feats of Petra, the similarly astonishing rock-cut temples of India and also Myra, which we have confirmed through the identification of the stonework and tool marks as having indeed been the work of the Cyclopeans. Were these ancient sites their final creations, left unfinished due to their demise? If so, the question remains, why do so many structures contain enigmatic techniques of clamping found nowhere else on Earth? And why are these structures near Nakashi Rastam seemingly built in direct opposite methods to their signature cut stones, reliefs instead? Were they the work of the same civilization? Or possibly a third as yet undiscovered group, who clearly accomplished an astounding degree of skill in stone carving themselves? We find ancient Iran not only perplexing, but incredibly compelling. <laughs>